the Rowdy Rough Boys. We are the Rowdy Rough Boys! Why they were more than just evil counterparts. Today, we're going to discuss one of the most interesting, yet at the same time overlooked elements of the Powerpuff Girls, the Rowdy Rough Boys. These guys are much more than just Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup in drag. Oh no, this goes much deeper. Something attached with those girls' insecurities, flaws, and darker sides of their character. So, fasten your seatbelts as we dive into what makes these bad boys tick and how they act like mirrors of our favorite crime-fighting trio. Here goes. Okay, first off, let me give a little intro of who these guys are. First appearing in the episode The Rowdy Rough Boys, they were created by Mojo Jojo with some rather disgusting ingredients. Snips, snails, and a puppy dog's tail. Snips and snails and a puppy dog tail, all that leaves is... Things most assuredly not made of sugar, spice, and everything nice. The boys were created to be the Powerpuff Girls' equals, but with a twist. They're chaotic, destructive, and just downright nasty in short. But here's the thing, they're not just some cookie-cutter bad boys. The Rowdy Rough Boys are analogous to the Powerpuff Girls both physically and emotionally in a very interesting way. Their existence pushes the girls to face many of their strengths, weaknesses, and insecurities, and that's where things get interesting. Let's go back to Mojo's pad and celebrate! So, now that we have set the stage, let's get into the real meat of it. Each of the Powerpuff Girls has a Rowdy Rough Boy counterpart, and it's the dynamic that takes place between them that things start to get really interesting. First of all, let's take a look at Blossom and her mirror image, namely Brick. Blossom, the smart, poised leader of the Powerpuff Girls, is confident and assured. Structure and order keep her on course, and she makes decisions on unbiased judgment and responsibility. So, in many ways, Blossom really encompasses the paradigm of what a leader should be. Decisive, rational, and composed in a tight squeeze. But often enough, these are littered with a dark side, and that's what Brick was there for, her rowdy rough counterpart. Brick would also become a leader, but his leadership style is a gross distortion of Blossom's. He feasts on control. But whereas Blossom did wish to balance and structure, Brick desired dominance and chaos. While Blossom leads with the intention of creating harmony among her sisters, Brick uses his power to establish dominance and feed a false sense of ego. He doesn't believe in unity or equality, but cares only about being superior, however damaging it may be. He acts on impulse, mostly opting for superficial, quick actions to stay ahead of his brothers rather than thinking things through as Blossom would. Oh, you're in for it now, losers. This contrast brings out the unlikable side of Blossom's leadership, the fear of losing control. Blossom is the kind who needs to feel she always has everything under her control, and that burden makes her inflexible and overly bossy at times. She disguises this well with a sense of responsibility, but deep inside, there's an ongoing gnawing fear of things disintegrating into chaos if she doesn't rule. In his usual careless manner, Brick holds up a mirror to this insecurity. His chaotic, domineering ways challenge Blossom's own need for control, forcing her to ask herself, is she truly a good leader because she wants to help, or is she just obsessed with keeping everything and everybody in line? Through most of his interactions, Brick goads Blossom's self-image, showing just how close her leadership tendencies could slide into becoming a control freak if not kept in check. It has often been the case that her keen eye watching is all that has stood between her sisters, or the world, from crumbling into disarray. The chaotic nature that Brick exhibits really points out how much Blossom's leadership is connected with her own sense of self-worth. The more he provokes her, the more she's forced to confront the reality that perhaps she's a little too consumed with being in control at every second, and her leading at any moment and any time isn't to guide others, but to not appear vulnerable. In a big way, Blossom's fight against Brick isn't about conquering an adversary, it's the acceptance of her own perfectionism and the fear of failure. Oh no! Look who's back with mean hair! With his utter and complete lack of concern about the consequences of leadership, 
Brick is a reminder that this is an easy path Blossom could go down if her need to be in control outweighs her actual desire to help others. The tension between them is less about physical power and more about an inner struggle on Blossom's part. Whether she can lead with empathy and trust, or whether she's doomed to become a dictator in her own right. Blossom's ultimate triumph over Brick is not a physical, but a symbolic defeat. She outwits him and regains her leadership in a form that works for everyone. She redeems her identity as a leader, not just a control freak. It is a moment of blossoming, reminding her that the only true paths to leadership do not involve control, but trust, flexibility, and strengthening those around you. But Blossom isn't the only one to confront her dark side. Bubbles, who's often perceived as sweet and carefree, simply has a lot brewing beneath the surface, and that counterpart in Boomer just brings out a different side of her that may not be so comfortable. Let's get into that. Bubbles usually assumes the sweet, innocent, and to a degree, naive member of the Powerpuff Girls. She is the emotional heart of this team. She is defined by her empathy, love of animals, and childlike wonder. Beneath its layer of sugar and smiles, though, lies a profound insecurity, the insecure fear of being taken seriously by others. This insecurity makes Bubbles struggle with validation, one of her profound internal struggles. Then, of course, Boomer, her rowdy rough counterpart, comes along, and that suppressed fear is brought into the limelight. On surface levels, Boomer would appear to be the least threatening of the Rowdy Rough Boys. He is less calculating than Brick or as hostile as Butch. But what really makes him an interesting parallel to Bubbles is that he shares most of her deep-seated vulnerabilities. Boomer, much like Bubbles, believes himself to be misunderstood and excluded by his brothers. In place of embracing his sensitivity and his vulnerability for what they are, well, assets really, Boomer channels insecurities into self-destructive behavior. Secondly, Bubbles and Boomer shared the need for recognition and assurance. But while Bubbles channeled her need to be loved into kindness and empathy, Boomer literally acted in desperation for approval in a much more toxic way. Acting out, lashing out, trying to prove himself through brute force that supposedly hails him respect. This reveals an inner aspect of Bubbles, the quiet fear that no matter how many powers she may have or how much she contributes, she is still the cute one, the baby of the group, and never as strong or capable as her sisters are. Boomer's desperation for validation parallels what could happen with Bubbles if she ever lets those insecurities consume her. Much like Bubbles, Boomer is emotionally fragile. He just hasn't found his positive outlet for those feelings. He instead internalizes the pain and then acts out, using aggressiveness as a means to prove his worth. Boomer's life course makes way for another version of development that could be taken by Bubbles, one in which her sweetness would, in time and with no recognition or being taken seriously by others, turn into bitterness. It is in her interactions with Boomer throughout the series that she finds herself forced to confront head-on her need for validation. Whereas usually Bubbles is the emotional glue holding everyone together, she fears far too often that her niceness is confused with weakness. In particular, this is evident through Boomer's erratic behavior. This can be seen to be very similar to Bubbles whenever she tries to prove to her sisters that she's not just the innocent sister. Of course, Boomer fails in most instances, for he does not realize that his real validations do not come from others but from within. Almost a bit of self-reflection about Bubbles and her interactions with Boomer is that while approval may be nice, inner strength and emotional intelligence are what compromise true power. Boomer, inversely, is caught in this really vicious cycle of broken self-doubt. He seeks the exterior's assurance as to who he is. It is, in fact, this desperate need for confirmation that ultimately renders Boomer fragile, not strong. Precisely what Bubbles is terrified to transform into, should she fail to balance her need for attention with the security of self-assurance. Indeed, one of the definitive characteristics of Bubbles is the way in which she can emotionally tap into her feelings without being enslaved by them. 
Boomer, conversely, allows his insecurities to breed and dominate his behavioral patterns. His sensitivity, beautiful in a manner that could have allowed him to be connected and empathetic, becomes a weakness that leaves him emotionally bare. If criticized or rejected, he reacts with violence, as if the employment of brute force somehow makes up for an emotional void. This, of course, sharply contrasts how Boomer approaches his emotions and shows just how thin the line is between reveling in sensitivity and condoning on how it makes her weak. In fact, in one episode, Bubbles bests Boomer not through hand-to-hand -hand combat, but through wit, playing on Boomer's crippling insecurities. It is, however, a moment wherein Bubbles actually realizes that her strength is not all about her muscular physique, but about emotional strength and the right use of her heart and brain. She finally grows by embracing her sensitivity and using it as a strength, not something to be ashamed of. She learns that true validation comes from within, and she doesn't need to prove anything to anyone else in order to come across as strong. Boomer is still stuck in his insecurities and never gets where the very need for validation is his ultimate weakness. Through her interactions with Boomer, Bubbles not only outsmarts him, but also comes to understand that her emotional intelligence and empathetic nature are actually things that make her strong, and she doesn't need anyone else's approval to realize that. Now, talking about hidden struggles, one shouldn't forget Buttercup. Known for her toughness, Buttercup's battle with her own aggression becomes even more apparent when we look at her relationship with Butch, the most brutal of the Rowdy Rough Boys. So, let's take a gander at what's going on here. But the most physically forceful of them all is Buttercup. She's super rough, fearless, and never once shows her back in a fight. Among the three sisters, Buttercup was the most embracing of her strength and wears it like a badge of honor. However, her love for combat and her real fiery temperament often blur the line between strength and aggression. That tension comes to a head when she's facing off against her rowdy rough counterpart, Butch, in raw, unhinged violence that forces Buttercup to confront the darker side of her own power. Butch, in most ways, is like Buttercup without limits. Whereas Buttercup channels her force into a quest for defense and protection, Butch is one of wild, unrestrained aggression. How can we defeat their scary new hairdos? He doesn't fight for justice, or even because he has to. He fights simply because he likes it. The more he makes chaos, the better he feels. The lack of control churns Butch into a mirror for the internal struggles of Buttercup. As hard as she may be, Butch symbolizes the destructive power of her unfettered aggression. He taunts and provokes Buttercup in the battles along the way, which make her fight harder and lose her head. Whereas her sisters use their power strategically or with restraint, at times Buttercup fights purely for the thrill of it. She revels in her strength, often using brute force to solve her problems. Butch capitalizes on that tendency by urging her to let go of restraint and control and to revel in the honest-to-goodness pleasure of violence. For Buttercup, this is a perilous temptation, for deep inside her, there's a thin line between strength and aggression and Butch embodies that part of her that would take her over the edge. Butch's hoarding of aggression and violence serves to mirror an inner fear of Buttercup's that her strength is not derived from a beginning rooted in control, but in anger. It explains why Buttercup thinks she is only fighting to protect her sisters in the world, while a part of her enjoys the battle too much, enjoys the dominance, the adrenaline, the power. Butch's unstoppable cruelty is what Buttercup could become if she allowed her aggression to fully realize itself in her identity. His indiscipline and his urge to destroy are the reflection of what happens when power is unbridled and when strength is not tamed by a moral compass, but by pure instinct and impulse. Butch is there to make Buttercup question whether her strength is, in fact, hers or if it too is driven by the same aggressive instincts that fuel Butch's rampages. He's the direction in which the unchecked violence lies, one in which strength is measured by physical dominance alone and not by control, discipline, or purpose. But Buttercup's journey is about finding balance. She does not want to appear weak, 
yet she also does not wish to become a mindless fighter who only knows about destruction. He thus is not only a physical opponent, but also a symbol of Buttercup's inner struggle with identity. In all of their interactions, Buttercup often finds herself on the cusp of submitting to her most violent impulses. Butch urges her to fight harder, hit stronger, and lose any moral inhibition. But ultimately, Buttercup finds her strength in recognizing that strength is not aggression. While Butch is strong in a most physical sense, his is an empty strength. It is driven by anger and chaos, without a deeper purpose or meaning. On the occasions of Buttercup, though, she learns it is not all in constant fighting, but in knowing when to fight and when to hold back, channeling aggression into something constructive rather than destructive. Then, epiphanically, the realization dawns. It is not strength. It is weakness that has Butch fighting. Losing control of his nature ultimately makes him predictable and easy to manipulate, and of course, self-destructive. Buttercup triumphs over Butch, but not in the physical defeat alone. It is a psychological defeat. She now realizes her power comes from her choice, to fight, to walk away. Butch's failure, on the other hand, is to do so. He is at the mercy of his impulses, whereas Buttercup learns to control hers. Curse you again, Powerpuff Girls! I'll be back, but Meanwhile, the road in which Buttercup travels in defeating Butch in each of their battles forms testimony to her character building. She starts off as an arrogant, powerful, and fist-fighting woman who often gives way to her emotions. But with all her struggles against Butch, she finally learns that strength without control means little. In the end, it is not just Butch whom Buttercup defeated, but an avatar of herself that would have succumbed to her own aggressiveness. She leaves the ring not only harder, but wiser, knowing full well that one is truly strong when one knows when to fight and when to let go. Even more intriguing, in a plotline featuring the Rowdy Rough Boys, the sheer fact that they can be physically stronger and more aggressive fails continuously. Why? Well, girls actually derive their strength not from their powers, but from emotional intelligence, teamwork, and understanding themselves. Accordingly, the girls all have to confront the shadow, Blossom's need for control, Bubbles' need for validation, Buttercup's fight with aggression. Through the Rowdy Rough Boys, these insecurities become exposed, but in doing so, it helps the girls grow. In terms of their defeat, what finally happens is that boys cannot evolve and stay fully diametrically opposed to the toxic traits, while girls are those who learned from their weaknesses and got stronger for it. It is ultimately not about the girls winning a fight with the boys. The bottom line is that it is about a person overcoming their true insecurities and finding that, in fact, it is their weaknesses that can be a source of strength once they are understood and managed correctly. While it is usually framed that the girls are good and the Rowdy Rough Boys are evil, there is really much more to it than that. The Rowdy Rough Boys aren't just evil, they're an imbalance. The girls have learned to balance their powers, personalities, and emotions, but the boys are chaos, dysfunction, and an inability to grow. That's why the girls win at the end, but not because they're good, but because they understand something fundamental, balance. They learn to accept themselves as imperfect, thus they open themselves toward change and therefore foster growth and adaptation. The Rowdy Rough Boys are static. Because they cannot discard those worst qualities, they sink into a vicious circle of destruction. The struggle with the girls and then with the boys is less about physical strength and more about an inner strength we all need to face our vulnerabilities, balance our lives, and learn to grow from the dark side of ourselves. The Rowdy Rough Boys are way beyond the mind of a cool, bad trio. It is a mirror reflecting both the Powerpuff Girls' own fears and insecurities and the darker tendencies. The girls, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, have been thrown into a confusing vortex in which boys are confronting them with aspects of their personality they'd rather not acknowledge, control, validation, aggression, picking up those traits and using them productively. Eventually, the Rowdy Rough Boys just remind us that the greatest wars indeed are never outside. 
Sometimes, the greatest battles we have literally had to go through in life are inside ourselves. And just like the Powerpuff Girls, it is accepting those imperfections that makes finding strength possible.